I am here today with uh, Captain William Lozier. He is the president and owner of the Memphis Riverboats. How are you doing today, Captain? I'm doing very good. How are you doing today? I am doing awesome. I am truly excited to, to talk to you today. I talk to a lot of businesses, but I have never talked to uh, uh, somebody with uh, this much history and this much uh, uh, this much going on in their in their businesses as uh, I am with you today. So I'm, I'm happy to get started. Awesome. Well, Captain, uh, why don't you start, uh, you know, I, I know I've read up on the history of your of your business here, but why don't you tell me a little bit about you uh, and your family, your third generation uh, in, in these uh, riverboats? I'd love to hear a little bit about you, your family, and kind of and kind of your business, if that's okay. That's great. Uh, the boats down here on the cobblestones uh, uh, were designed and built by my grandfather, uh, Cap Captain Tom Meanley. Um, he designed and built them in his backyard overall. Uh, Shelby Drive across from Coral Lake. And they were trailered down here and then put in the water and built the rest of the way up. Um, I'm a third generation riverboat captain. Um, my, uh, of course, my grandfather, my uncle, my mother, my father, my brother were all uh, captains. And now I have the fourth generation coming in. I have uh, my daughter, Brooklyn, which she is also a captain and fix and send my other daughter to school so she can become a captain. Wow. So it's, a, it, it's a labor love. This is something that, you know, we, we're excited about uh, keeping going. I feel we're the cornerstone of tourism in Memphis. I, I think we're the longest concurrent running operation. You know, so this operation's run since the 50s and uh, it's never shut the doors. Wow, that is awesome. Well, first, congratulations on that. I mean, that's that's exciting to, to hear because I know that, you know, a few things have gone on between, uh, you know, the 50s and now. So it's, it's great to hear that you've been able to keep your doors open. Um, all, also exciting to hear that uh, this is a family affair and that your daughters are getting involved as well. That's that's awesome. So so, Captain, uh, let me ask you a question. So. You know, you've got, uh, you know, I, I see, obviously, you're, you're, I'm assuming you're on one of the river boats right now. Is that right? Yes, sir. I'm on the Island Queen. Awesome. So, so talk to me about your fleet. What do you, what do you have right now uh, in the water or, or in the works? I have uh, the two main vessels right now, the Memphis Queen 3, and uh, that holds 300 pastures, and the Island Queen, which holds 344 pastures. These are our two main operating boats right now. Um, we also have, a few other boats, um, the uh, Memphis Queen 2, which is uh, the first all steel pasture vessel on the Mississippi River. It was built in 1955 by Dubuque Boat and Buller Works. We've been renovating that boat and we're hoping to have her um, back out in the water um, next year for service. And we also have the Memphis Show Boat, which was, uh, I think it was the last boat built by Dubuque Boat and Buller Works, built in uh, 1967. It was a barge at first. It's also the, if you look back at the history, the Memphis Showboats were the football team in Memphis. They were actually, it was actually, they were actually named after this boat, but uh, it holds 600 passengers. Um, we're changing it up a little bit. We're gonna put engines on it where it propels itself instead of has to be pushed around by a towboat. And um, those are all in the works. Um, and things are going a little slow because, you know, as everybody has just a little bit of labor shortage and uh but we're we're moving forward and we hope to have everything uh up and going really soon awesome well that's exciting and, and i want to dig into that here in just a minute but let's talk so your current business right can you describe to me uh you know kind of what what you guys are doing on the river right now well we do a sightseeing cru cruise every day um at 2.30, and then we also do uh, dinner cruises Wednesday through uh, Saturday. Um, and uh, we have some moonlight cruises on, uh, on Saturday, and we also do a brunch cruise every Sunday. So it's a pretty busy operation. Uh, we, we move quite a few people through um, in a weekend. Some, you know, it can be up close to a thousand people pretty easily. Wow. Okay. So, so you guys have been, you know, obviously concurrently running, you've got a, a solid business going here. What's it like uh, uh, post pandemic? I mean, did you have to shut, I, obviously you didn't shut down, but I mean, you slowed down for the pandemic. What does it look like now? 
Yeah, we shut down completely during the pandemic. You know, the reason why is, you know, um, basically it wasn't we were required to shut down, but everybody expected us to shut down. So we just took that time and started working on the operation and getting some stuff done that we needed to do anyway. But ever since the pandemic, we, we come back, you know, each year is better than the year before. And um, we have more and more people coming down the hill, a lot more demand for our services. Well, that's awesome. I, I think when you and I were talking before, you know, we, we kind of touched on labor just a bit, right? So, uh, you know, you mentioned that your suppliers are having labor issues. Uh, you know, are, are you having labor issues or, or, or is it just business as usual? Yes, yes we're having labor issues. Um, um, that's why we're only operating two boats instead of three. And um, we, we're just trying to do the best we can with what we have to work with, you know. It, it's it's hard to get skilled labor down the hill and it's you know and it, it's hard getting you know people want to come to work um that's one reason why i still work so <laughs> here we are <laughs> i love it so you know uh one of the things that i found fascinating uh you know in, in in an earlier conversation we had was uh you know you're looking at your your retooling your fleet right you know you're you're, you're putting these two boats back in the water again uh you know it, are you utilizing newer technologies? Are you, you know, how is that working now? Or is it just refitting what it was? No, we're using, we're utilizing new, um, higher tier engines, you know, more fuel efficient, better for the environment. Um, LED lighting versus, you know, regular bulb lighting and, you know, things that are more efficient because the less power you draw, the less fuel you burn. And, uh, we're trying to, you know, especially with fuel prices going up to the roof, we're trying to, you know, uh, do the best we can with what we got to work with. So, so what kind of, uh, you know, is, is this technology doing, you know, obviously it's more fuel efficient. It's going to be energy saving, which is absolutely awesome. Um, you know, are you, are you able to replace some of the, some of the labor requirements for this? Cause I got to imagine, you know, a hundred years ago, it probably caused a, it took a few more people to run on a boat. Yeah. Um, you know, that's that's one thing it's you know because of labor issues it's you know it's a cheaper to buy a piece of machinery that can do a, a job compared to uh putting a worker in um unfortunately you know it's like that you know back when my grandfather's running the place it was cheaper for labor than it was to buy, buy machinery so he did it the hard way we do it the, we do it a lot easier okay awesome well i mean i think that's the idea right is Hopefully, as things evolve, as things evolve, we could do it a little bit smarter and a little bit, uh, a little bit easier. To open our time for something else. I like it. Yes, sir. So, so what kind of technologies are you putting in uh, to help out with that? Like um, changing the propellers from like a, you know, three, four, four blade wheels to five blade wheels. It's a, it's a more efficient push, and the boat doesn't vibrate as bad. Uh, changing the bearings that, um, you know, the old bearings were Babbitt bearings that were poured in compared to the new bearings that are that are machined to fit and less drag and everything like that. And um, just just a lot of uh, anything that's more efficient, like, you know, all the way from lighting to uh, systems on the boat, you know, old, old systems and old wiring, we take them out and we replace them. Okay. Okay. So, you know, your your daughters are obviously getting into this, right? If you were, if you were looking ahead, right. And you were, and you were kind of projecting, you know, where, where this industry is going to go, you know, what kind of things do you think they're going to be able to capitalize on or what kind of things do you think they're going to be able to, uh, to bring to the table uh, in the future as, as this starts to evolve? Uh, well, they bring a lot to the table right now. Uh, you know, it's, it's more of a, you know, I, I trust them. They can do, they know how to do this job. They were raised in this industry um they'll have new ideas they'll they'll come up with new new things to sell things of that nature and um all the best ideas are stolen so you know you just gotta you just gotta look around and see what everybody else is doing and and, and try to copy what works i like it i like it and I, it's funny right because the world's so small now uh, i think you and i were joking earlier right is you, you catch a video on the internet and all of a sudden now everybody knows how to do it right so uh, I, I think that's outstanding. And I think hopefully they can bring, you know, they can bring that technology aspect. They can bring, 
you know, bring bring those ideas in along with the history of your family and the history of how this is going. So I think that's extremely important. So, you know, with your, uh, you know, one of the things I always find interesting, right, is is our industry, the hospitality industry, it, it it's huge at this point, right? And I think everybody's starting to become very keenly aware that it's not just hotels, it's not just, uh, you know, uh, it's the restaurants and some of these traditional industries that it really is expansive. I mean, it's really anytime anybody is, a person is talking to another person or a person is serving another person, you know, that's the industry. Um, what I love about you and what I love about your, your, your business right now is that it's, it, it's compounded success, right? It started with your grandfather. It started with, you know, your father, yourself, your daughters. Do you think that that, do you think that that brings, um, do you think that brings something to the table or value adds for any of the guests that come on your riverboat? Yeah, because, you know, we, we've seen it. We've, we've done it all. Um, we're very efficient at what we do. We, we're very safe about what we do. Um, and it, it brings, you know, we know the area. We know, the, you know, we know everybody around here. And, you know, the, uh, and, just it's a relationship we have a relationship with the city you know that we have a good relationship with them and they have a good relationship with us so in they would, so it's easy for us to deal with people and and you know work alongside everybody awesome yeah i talked to uh, a few months ago i i i talked to uh brett batterson who is who runs the orpheum right and, uh, you know, one of the things that I found amazing about Memphis is the, the, the culture and the history and how everybody's been able to, uh, you haven't seemed to lost any, you haven't lost any of it. It seems like, it seems like it's it, businesses like yours, like his are kind of cornerstones of the, of the city. How do you guys do that? Uh, just a lot of dedication and hard work. I mean, you know, you get up every day, you do what's in front of you and you make sure you have your your long plan for what you're going to do in the future and and uh, you had to be liquid you had to you had to take into account for trends pandemic stuff like that and you you just move forward that's all you can do you you, you can't you can't dwell on what what could have been it's you had to push to what is going to be i, I love it and i and i think that that's you know it's kind of the heart of resilience that i think a lot of business owners uh, you know, the ones that were successful and they came out of the pandemic just fine. I think that's what it was, right? It was, you know, this is a moment, you know, let's focus on what's next and let's push through, right? Yeah, I think it's more resolve and willpower. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. So, you know, with your with your two boats, I mean, it, one of them's historic monument at this point in time, isn't it? Yeah, the Memphis Queen 2, the one that's the one that we're restoring right now. Um, it's actually a historic landmark. It's got the nice little uh, plaque there at the top of the hill. And they, uh, the Memphis Showboat, as soon as it's finished, we'll put it on the list also. You know, these are these are icons in Memphis. I mean, if you look up, you know, you look up things things about Memphis, you'll you'll always see our boats. You know, we're, we're one of the uh, one of the uh, tourist attractions that you know most people visit. It's awesome. So you talk about tourists, right? Uh, you know, and your business is growing and growing. You know what? Uh, what kind of tourists are you seeing? I mean, is it is it people flying in? Is it people driving in? Is it locals? What What are you seeing right now? Well, the uh, on the sightseeing cruises, you see a lot of uh, lo locals and people that are driving in. Uh, some flying in from out of town on your um, on your uh, brunch cruises. You see about the same. Your uh, dinner cruises. A lot of uh, ninety percent of those people are local. You know, everybody's ready to get out. You know, they were in, they were cooped up from the pandemic they're they're ready to spend money they're ready to go have a good time and and we we supply that i love it i love it and i think that's what uh you know i i think that's what a lot of the leaders are keying in on right now a lot of business owners like yourself are keying in on is the fact that people are just ready to get out and have a good time right yes sir awesome awesome so I, it's funny because I, I now I bring it up people I've talked to on this show before, right? But uh, you know, a, a couple of them, and I got to imagine this this may be on yours as well. But you know, you, you get the unruly guests as well, right? Are you guys dealing with a little bit of that, or 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 is everybody there just just pretty much there to have a good time? 
90 percent of the people are there to have a good time you know you're always going to have one or two people that you know that just uh have a bad outlook on life and they're negative but you know that's everywhere we just keep a positive attitude and we push forward love it i love it yeah and, and you're absolutely right i mean I think a lot of people will build policies around, you know, the few bad apples. And then, you know, all of a sudden you got your staff looking for bad apples, your team's looking for bad apples when really they're missing all the good ones that are sitting right there. Right. All the, all the people who came there to see the history, to experience the river, to see what it is you're doing. Well, at the end of the day, this is experience. You know, you want everybody to smile and everything like that. You know, just some people honestly you can't satisfy, but what I, I don't try to dwell on that. I, you know, the, the, if the boat goes out with 200 people and one person's not happy because of something that's happened personally in their life, um, that's not on me. You know, I'm worried about the rest of the people having a good time. That's, you know, I hope everybody does, but you can't please everybody. We try, but we can't. <laughs> well, I, I think that, uh, you know, as we look ahead as an industry and as you look ahead as well, you know, it seems like the, the future's looking bright. Um, it looks like, you know, you're looking to expand by leaps and bounds. And so I, I really hope you can get the, the technology you need and the, the, the parts and pieces you need in order to be able to get that up and running your daughters, uh, you know, obviously take over the business and do great. Hopefully you'll get to retire at some point. Cause it sounds like you're still going, going strong. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the game, you know, at the end of the day, you know, um, I continue the legacy and I'm, you know, it's, it's going to be time to pass it. And when I'm, you know, when I get everything set up where they can receive it, is theirs. I love it. I love it. So, you know, as you look ahead to the future, you know, one of the things I always like to do is I always like to try to, to leave our listeners with some piece of advice, right? Like if I'm coming into the industry right now uh, and I look at it, at somebody who's as successful as you are, you know, what kind of advice would you have for me, uh, you know, coming in and, 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 and hopefully taking over as a leader? You just had to, uh, you had to, you had to be dedicated. You had to be persistent you had to um, you had to make the best of what you got to work with and have a positive attitude and just keep pushing forward. I, I think that's huge. I think a lot of people hit a little bit of adversity and, and the first I, the first thought is to run. Um, you know and, and I think we're seeing that right We're seeing that everywhere with with the you know the great resignation or, or uh, you know whatever people are calling it you hit a little bit of adversity or, or uh, you know, you can't quite find your groove and all of a sudden you, you think the grass is greener. What I love about that is that everybody's saying, uh, you know, not everybody, a lot of people are saying they wish they hadn't gone anywhere. Right. Um, and so I, I, I listen to that piece of advice and I think to myself, man, uh, you know, if people were just a little bit more resilient, uh, you know, a little, little bit more focused, a little bit more positive, it would make all the difference in the world in, in maintaining some of what's going on right now. Yeah, I mean, you know, a negative outlook, you know, uh, gives you negative thoughts, a positive outlook, positive thoughts. You know, you, you want to you want to just be the do the best at what you can do and be the best of what you are. Then, that, you know, that's it's it's not not hard. Just get up every day. Uh, do your start your day and then, you know, get through that plan for your future. Like it. I like it. You know, I, it's so funny right now. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at you. I'm so jealous. I actually took my t-shirt off to put my jacket on to come to this. I should have just kept the t-shirt on. I, uh, it would have been a lot more fun. Yes, sir. Love it. Well, I, you know, if I want to, if, if I'm a listener and I want to know, uh, uh, more about, you know, the Memphis river boats, where can I go to find out more? You can go on, online. Uh, it's Memphis riverboats.net and, um, uh, you can, you know, look through the cruises, book online. Um, if you need the phone number, it's 901-527-BOAT. And um, you can call up here and you can talk to somebody. I mean, it's a, it's a, great, uh, it's a great thing to do, you know, at least try it once, you know. Uh, we want to see you down here. Awesome. Well, hopefully uh, anybody who's listening to this is, is keen on a lot of what you're saying here. I mean, you know, your, your family, your business, uh, you know, this business has got staying power. And I think a lot of people should be interested in that. Uh, I love the fact that you're integrating new technologies to replace some of the shortages in labor. I think that's, you know, key. Um, and you're bringing in history to it, which, which is just gives you goosebumps. This is exciting. So I think that's absolutely awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. 
Well, uh, you know, Captain, I, I thank you very much for your time. And, uh, you know, I, I'm really hoping that I can make it down to Memphis and, and get a chance to take one of the cruises. I think that sounds awesome. Yes, sir. Come on down and ride with me. I'd love to. I'd love to. Uh, and just as a side note, I'm sure my child would lose his mind to be able to get on there. So we'll, we'll have to come down there. My kid loves him. Definitely bring him. All right. Well, Captain William, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And thank you for your time today. Thank you.